actually. Uh, so we were starting off with life getting in the way of meditation. And then you mentioned something about not liking it. Mm, yes, and not wanting to do the practice and... N not wanting to do the practice. Deciding to to just, like, there is sati and actively deciding to, no, I just want to lie down in bed and cry now instead of feeling happy. I didn't catch that. You want to either lie down in bed and cry or feel happy. Yeah, exactly. Like yesterday there was, uh, like, whatever, big impact situation and there was sati like in one point like it was a long discussion whatever and there was sati and i was like okay you could take a deep breath or you could just lie down in bed and cry and i actively decided for the second one okay did you enjoy that cry a little well why didn't you enjoy it a whole much i mean that was your choice I don't, I, I, Sometimes I it's like quite a relief. Was it a relief? Not really, no. No, it wasn't even a relief. Sounds more and more like it was a dead waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. relief, no pleasure, but that's what you chose to do. Yeah. It f feels a little bit like an addiction. Like when I woke up this morning again, it was like, yeah, you could be happy or just go on and think about it all day. So, well, at least now you know you have a choice. Which is a whole lot better than most people have. Most people don't even know they have a choice. At least you know you have one. But I think I don't see it for the moment. I know I have one, but not in every moment. Like, I'm not convinced sometimes that it's in every moment. For example, yesterday, when the situation was, I wasn't convinced that I could do it. You wouldn't convince that you could take a deep breath? That's easy enough to convince yourself you can take a deep breath <laughs> is by taking one. Yeah, but I wasn't convinced convinced of the consequences of then feeling good or feeling relieved or feeling less stressed or feeling yeah. oh we're looking for consequences yeah okay uh could you enjoy it could you enjoy that cry even if there were no consequences to it Generally, when people cry, they do have a release, and you are a relief, and you're saying, no, you didn't even have that. No, because I was so overwhelmed with the situation. There was nothing to relieve. It was just, yeah, it's pushing down oh. on me. All right. Well, let's, how is that situation now with this breath? Wait a minute, before you answer the question, take one. <laughs> Still nagging on me. Like, okay. even when I take this deep breath, there's like so, always some point nagging at me that I can't put it away or there. I know, okay, I have to All deal right. with this. Let's, let's look at that then. You just use your right hand and pointed to three different places close proximity to your chest here. You just did this. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to show. Okay, and that a... wasn't a genuflect. A what? That wasn't a genuflect. That wasn't what Catholics do. Ah, no. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't a micro version of that, okay. Some people do a little one. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just wanted to show there. 
All right. So you're pointing at a, this is what I'm getting at is that you're pointing at a place in your body. Okay. Without thinking about it, do you feel it right now? Yeah. Okay. Maybe I thought about it a second <laughs> and then said, yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. All right. So take a deep breath. Does it make it bigger or worse when you take a deep breath? When you've got an in-breath, is it a bigger feeling? It feels hidden. I, I can't I can't quite catch it. It's like yeah, every time I try to catch it, it slips away. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, and yet when you're not chasing it, it runs your life. Is that what you say? Yes. But when you're chasing it, 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 it try, in fact, when you try to get to it, it, it runs away. Hmm. I wonder if I've heard that before. So now that you've been chasing it, is it gone? No. Still lurking there, huh? Yeah, still it's like, it feels like if I could find it, then I could uproot it, but I can't find it. Okay. Does it have a name? Like Jerry or Sam or... <laughs> no. <laughs> Rumpelstiltskin, perhaps? <laughs> no, no name. Okay. Well, what does it look like? Is and what's it hiding behind? Is it hiding behind a tree? No. <laughs> then what? It, normally, when something is hiding, is hiding behind something. What's it hiding behind? Good question. I have a whole basket full of them here. <laughs> <laughs> Probably behind nothing, like uh, at least nothing I can see or feel or. All right, so maybe it's not so much hiding is, is that it's just not so big. Yeah, maybe. But the thing is that that's just annoying that I can't throw it out completely with the breath or with the thought of go away or. OK, well, if you can't make it go away right now, uh, perhaps if you had a name, what would its name be if it had a name? <laughs> hmm. Good question. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe some negative emotion name that I can't describe. Uh, turd. Turd. <laughs> is it like a turd? <laughs> what is it? Is it a name or is it an adjective turd? A turd is when shit's all wrapped in a ball. Yeah, then it's a turd. <laughs> <laughs> For instance, a cow pie is not a turd. Okay. Yeah, then maybe it's a turd. <laughs> yeah. But young boys tend to make turds. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And sometimes cartoon turds have funny faces on them. Does this one have a funny face? Mr. Turd? <laughs> As you can see, what we're doing is we're beginning to play with this thing. Allow it to be a toy. 
And perhaps by giving it the name Mr. Turd, you could make friends with him. <laughs> what is this feeling inside? Allow yourself to make friends with it so you can get to know it. And you've already started to take control over it because you've been in looking at it, investigating it, and that's the best way to take control. But see, before you just didn't like it and wanted to get rid of it. Yeah. All right. But you're not in that state right now. You're more of an accepting, knowing that it's there, but it can be seen as a toy and we can play with it and that it's not so bad after all. Mm. And it's yes. When you know it. Yes. In as you say, seclusion year, but then the thought comes that it's like attached to the situation that I have to go through every day. So it just get fed. Like when I leave this Which room. Which means that if you can get in touch with and make friends with the feelings that you have, then that means that you can make fe friends with the feelings that you're having about that situation. So when you're walking into sit that situation, you can take a deep breath and says, Mr. Turd's on his way. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Turd, we know. Come on down. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. Okay, because it's got it nothing really to do with the situation. It's got the way you you feel. Yeah, I'm and, and you've it. got and you've got two bad feelings, one on top of the other. One is you don't like the situation, and then you don't like not liking the situation, which is a typical catch twenty two for Buddhists and sometimes Christians. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, what this is, is really brightening the mind to become, let us say, satisfied. Now, I know Western Buddhism kind of uses the word accepting. But that's not a really a good word. But just accepting means that you can be satisfied with it. You don't have to accept it. Okay. All right. But the investigation and knowing that you could be okay even if this feeling is there. Then you've got half the battle won. Because remember you had a two-stage battle. One that you didn't like the situation. And now, and then uh, before, you didn't like that you didn't like the situation. Now you've gotten down halfway to where you can say, okay, I don't like the situation, but I'm happy that I don't like it. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> hmm. we haven't even discussed the situation. The situation, in fact, not really important, is still all about the way that you feel. And now that you've recognized that you've come halfway, that you can like that you don't like it, rather than hate that you don't like it. That's wisdom. Is to accept that you don't like it. There's a lot of things I don't like, but it's okay. I don't like them. I'm certainly not going to do anything about it. <laughs> An example of that is, is mosquitoes. Other than lighting a mosquito coil, I'm not going to do much of anything about them. I'm going to sit here on the porch and let them bite me and not scratch. <laughs> <laughs> But that doesn't mean I have to like mosquitoes. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> okay. So maybe then yesterday it was just expecting too much again. Expecting like out of the deep breath. Yourself. Exactly. 
Mm -hmm. Because I was like, okay, there's Sati. I can even take the deep breath and still nothing's working. So yeah, it's the same circle again of, yeah, this is bullshit, doubt, yeah, yeah, <laughs> expecting too much. <laughs> okay, well, now that we're halfway there, that we need to stop and congratulate ourselves. Hey, I'm not going to feel bad about not liking it, whatever the situation is. But it's okay that I don't like it. In fact, isn't it marvelous that I can step around that cow pie happily? Yeah, sometimes in like Western, I don't know, psychology kicks in and then the doubt of is it really that good to push away the negative feeling or is there any value in how to say it? Like, many, are there many people get great value in wallowing in their own self-pity. I know, I was very good at it. <laughs> There's a certain amount of satisfaction in there. Yes. Mm -hmm. It gives us permission to fail. Okay. I was looking to so suppress the feeling and then it just is there and someday it will come up and everything will get worse. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like this, you are not allowed to suppress these feelings. And yeah, I'm not sure if I'm communicating correctly what I want to say. Yes, there's a, there's a particular mistake in that logic. And it's, a, and it's a Western mistake in that logic. And that they took that logic to its extremes back in the 1970s when psychotherapy was really, really getting its roots, getting foundation, getting an, um, an infrastructure, uh, uh, fighting with the insurance companies, getting legitimacy and that kind of thing. All right, making bestseller list on uh, uh, one after another, having famous psychologists, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. All right. During that time, they came up with the idea, and in fact, the idea started with Fritz Perls. And Fritz Perls um, was was German, but he spent most of his career in Esalen, California. Don't want to get into too much detail, but it's a delicious set of details. Okay, the, the concept is what they call the other chair, to where the psychologist and the, ther and the client would sit in each chair one, and then uh, they would have a dialogue mm -hmm. between the client and the empty chair. Okay. All right so as to help resolve issues that slowly deteriorated into uh, having mom in that other chair rather than the boss going out of the moment into uh, old ancient history doing archaeology and people getting angry because basically the psychologist was talking them into it okay all right so now they start with the idea of pillows. And so the, the chair is replaced by a pillow and the anger is being let out by the client when he's hitting a pillow mm. with the pillow. Mm. Okay. That's the next step along the line. The next step along the line after that is things called encounter groups where the uh, clients don't have a pillow to bash, they have each other to bash. Okay, <laughs> yeah. First, first uh, uh, talking, and then if it's a long, uh, say a 10 day or so re retreat, uh, an encounter retreat, there's gonna be more than <clears throat> one fight. With that, and carrying that stuff back to weekly sessions and whatnot, brought on the idea of having uh, padded gloves, uh, padded helmets, batons yeah. that were really big, padded kind of stuff, and 
what they began to understand was is that people were letting their anger out old anger from a long time ago they were letting it out in the therapy session going home then and having domestic violence that they couldn't after it got out yeah. it started taking control mm -hmm. okay because why because they thought that they had been suppressing it where in fact what they were doing was is that they were beginning to recognize that it's actually quite delicious this anger this okay. to express our frustration mm -hmm. Okay, and that it, in those moments when that anger is really delicious, it's hard to, very hard to see the danger. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Buddhist technique is completely different than that, but there was still left a lingering quality in, in Western thought about suppression of feelings. Mm-hmm. Okay. Except that we have to understand what they mean by suppression of feelings. Because normally what we're talking about here with the, the technique of the Buddha is let's forget about long-term things. Here's where the connection is. When, when you think of suppression, you're thinking of holding the lid down on something that's constantly rumbling. And mm -hmm. if you stop holding down on it, it will burst out. Yes. Okay. Guess what? That's not true. Okay. The lid has to be taken off first. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily holding the lid on. The lid mm -hmm. is on. But your situation, and every time that situation, whatever the situation is, you decide that you're going to open that can, that lid, and let that stuff back out. Mm -hmm. Okay? Basically, what that means is, is that we are nourishing a habit. The more we do something, the more ingrained it gets. A way of thinking, a way of eating our food, a way of walking a way of anything, the way we handle our arms and everything. This is why uh, in Buddhism, with the Buddha's practice, we actually work with all the postures so as to become restrained in the body so mm -hmm. that we don't have to do a lot of moving around. Uh, 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 generally, we're talking about two kinds of moving around. One is expressing with the hands when we're talking. I mean, some people are just expressing. And the other part of the time is when people are just waving their arms and moving around a lot without anything in particular to do. But what that expresses is a deep internal restlessness. Mm, sure, yeah. Okay. And that it expresses itself, but still they're not doing that all the time. Everybody goes to rest. Everybody puts a lid on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and so there's a distinction between then constantly rumbling anger versus the propensity to allow anger to arise. Okay. Okay. It's like the distinction between a house ready built versus all of the ingredients and all the building materials that are laying out there in the field and how fast does it take to build that house? Yeah, okay. okay. All right, because if the house of anger is already built, then you don't have any choice about it. But if you've got a, a whole yard full of building materials for that house, you can make new plans. Okay. And, and construct something new immediately. If you have wisdom at the point of contact, you can decide to feel the way you want to feel. Just like you're beginning now through this new thing that we were talking about, is, is that you felt bad, and then you didn't like that you felt bad. Yes. Now we've gotten to the point of it's okay to feel bad, but we got to like feeling bad. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's true. 
<laughs> you see where this is going? You see that, in fact, you do have a bit of control over the way you feel. Mm, yeah, yeah. So that in a particular situation, you can like some of it and not like others and allow that mixture to be there. But it doesn't have to go slamming all the way over to what you would call suppressed anger. You can just say, I'm not going to allow the anger to arise. I'm going to be mindful. So when that niggle that's inside that turmoil that you're talking about, Mr. Turd, does not have to grow into Mr. Monster. He can just stay at the level of Mr. Turd, who, by the way, hides from you, which means comes and goes. Mm -hmm. Which means that now you've got a new job to do is to start watching out for Mr. Turd <laughs> and his arrival. But we also know when he's most likely to arrive. Yes. All right. That he's unlikely to arrive on the uh, fifth day of a retreat that you're having on the moon or someplace. Yeah, yeah sure. But he I, is I know. most likely to <laughs> arrive yeah. about five or ten seconds before you walk into that situation yeah so that's the time to be on guard for it mm. but as you said sometimes it, it sort of reverberates or it's like uh, an earthquake with aftershocks yes and it, you can just... feel it a little bit now if you go looking for it yeah this preferred oh. really comes on strong uh at at a particular situation so now you know when to uh to plan for him and when he comes up, you can say, hi, Mr. Turd. <laughs> I knew you were coming. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you're saying that it's nothing about the suppression stuff and it's even better to see it, to not let it become a habit, to feel that way. Right. And to not like it. Not liking what you're in the habit of doing is just piling more not liking onto it. That in fact, what we're talking about here is lighten up a little bit, which means actually start mixing some joy and some confidence in with the, whatever the situation is that you don't like. Okay. And so now with hi, Mr. Turd, that means that now you have right attitude. You're the winner here. Mr. Turd is not going to come stink up your day. Mm -hmm. It's okay that that feeling comes. And when it comes strong, you can take a really good look at it. Can you chase it around? Can you make it hide right in the middle of everything? The situation, I mean. Yeah, sure. <laughs> now, you've noticed I haven't even asked you what the situation is. Yeah, All yeah. I know is that you mentioned the word work. Which is where most people have situations. Ah, no, it's, <laughs> no, no, it's not work. It's not work. <laughs> well, in whatever the situation is, recognize that you have a bit of choice over how you're going to feel about it. And you can uh, understand that I choose not to like mosquitoes. In fact, I might start to think about that. that might make some friends there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <clears throat> and what about make like getting more, let's say, pessimistic because I see stuff more clearly? For example, uh, let's say Can't relation. you congratulate yourself for seeing things more clearly? <laughs> uh, a little bit, yeah. But all right, that's it, the same thing. Because aren't you now being able to recognize it, it, maybe not in this moment, but pretty soon you're going to be able to um, uh, look at Mr. Turd more clearly. Yeah. Yeah, you can look at anything more clearly. Or <clears throat> you can stay blind and ignorant to it and then get surprised. In a very negative way, like Mr. Turd's married and he's got children. <laughs> yeah, but the seeing creates 
dissatisfaction because I can't make a deal out of it. So, example, let's say a relationship. Like, when you're getting into it, you know it's good, but you also see now, okay, the feeling of, am I good enough? Where will this be? Like, how long will, how long will it last? So, it's like this in feeling other goes... Words, you're beginning to see the danger. In the beginning, all we can see is the gratification. Yeah, exactly. And now I see everything now attached to... Now you're beginning to see the danger. Yeah, and it's... Yeah. So you're not really seeing the danger clearly enough. You're actually seeing the danger as the situation, but really the danger is, for instance, what we've been talking about here is, is that you don't like the situation, number one, and then number two, you don't like that you don't like the situation. All right, so if the situation is relationship, it's the same thing. But the important point is, is that you're beginning now to see the danger. Danger is actually just a code word for dukkha. You can see, but normally what we mean by the word danger is that you can see dukkha ahead. You mm -hmm. can see that this is dangerous. Just like uh, someone on a diet can see a donut as dangerous before he started the diet, all he could see was the delight. All he could see was um, um, the gratification of the donut, the good taste. But now he can see the danger in the donut. And by seeing that danger, he can get an escape from that donut mm -hmm. by giving it to the dog or something. Yes, but <laughs> yeah, with donut, it's fine. But with other stuff, I'm not sure that I see all the danger, but I'm not sure if I want to let myself, like, if I want to allow it despite of the danger. Now, here's the point. Again, in fact, I, <laughs> I set up a trap for you when I talk about <laughs> the word relationship. Because okay. when we think of relationship, we also think about something that's long-lasting. Almost the same thing as having to keep a lid on all of this rumbling bad feelings in here that we also have to keep with that, that, that the relationship is constant. Oh, no, that's not the case. The relationship only happens in two times. One is when she's there in front of you. And number two, when you think she's there in front of you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So those are the two times. Now, uh, the easy one to deal with there is the thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Because now we can incorporate, okay, relationship is dukkha. It is dangerous. Therefore, it is off limits for the mind. Mm -hmm. And you stop thinking about it every time the relationship comes up. And in fact, you might find that, that thinking about the situation brings on the feeling. Yeah. That they're interrelated. Yeah, yeah, sure. And that uh, if you stop those thoughts, then you don't have to feel that way. Y yeah. But the, I yeah. think it's the other way around as well. Like sometimes there's feeling and then thoughts. There's sometimes that, right. When the feelings get so deeply ingrained that they come up all by themselves without having to have a trigger uh, of thought, but they will still have a trigger. Okay. It, but it'll be a nonverbal kind of thought that triggers them. In other words, a feeling can trigger a feeling. Just as okay. well as a trigger can be, uh, a thought can trigger a feeling. Okay. And thoughts can also, or excuse me, feelings can also trigger thoughts. Mm -hmm. That they work together like that. That's why they're all in the mind. I mean, there it is. They're all together, stuck together and fiddling with each other. And it's your job to kind of see that interplay. Mm-hmm. All right, so one of the ways that we deal with it 
is by making certain kinds of thought patterns off limits. Now, the example that I would use for for most is <laughs> because this is the example that I heard when I was in the watch, so that's the one we use. The old man comes to, he's been coming to that watch for his whole life. He was a young monk. Now he's on the board of directors. His whole life is that what? What is the what? Okay. What is the temple? Oh, okay. Okay. So he's uh, uh, he's there every day. A new monk comes. He gets into an argument with this new monk. And then he goes home to cool off. But he's a wise old man because he was a monk and he's practiced well. And so now he has the idea for right now, I am not going to think about that wad at all. His whole life. Anytime that I have a thought about the wad, I'll have a thought about that monk. Anytime I have a thought about that monk, I'll have a thought about the argument that we had. And then I'm going to feel bad and I'm choose not to do that. So the wad right now is off limits. Mm -hmm. When I go to the Watt, I'll go to the Watt, but I'm not going to think about the Watt and not go there. Okay, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So this is, a th this is the example, and the Buddha uses it in many ways, including um, uh, animal training. He talks about the, the elephant. When the elephant breaks away from his uh, uh, harness, he always goes back to his old favorite place. Where is his favorite place? In our example, donuts. Okay, mm. those delicious donuts. But now we're recognizing, oh no, those donuts are dangerous. Let's make sure that wherever the mind go, it does not go to the what or to the donuts or to the mm, relationship. Okay. We keep the mind away from it completely. Okay. So. This is a way that we section it off. We can also go so far as in to say every thought that I would have about the relationship is either already unwholesome or heading in that direction. Yeah, that's yeah, I already saw that. All right, so it's pretty, it's pretty simple to see, actually. <laughs> Good. You're right. You're beginning to see the danger of it. So now we can say, I'm going to avoid thoughts about the relationship okay. throughout the day, that that is a new job that I have. You know, now I have a, a, a not to do list. Okay. Okay. A not to do list. And thoughts of the relationship is at the top of the list. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay. Why? Because uh, we do not go under that rubric of the old uh, encounter group Fritz Perl's uh, mentality that says, oh, you've got all of these pent up emotions. They're not pent up, they arise, they come up. But they come up from roots. But when they do come up, if we cut it off every time it comes up, then the roots will wither and die. Okay, this is so another analogy. So what I'm saying is, is that all the bad feelings that you have about the relationship will die off if you don't allow any thoughts about the relationship. Instead, the kind of uh, thoughts you have as well. I don't have to think about that right now. That'll take care of itself later. I can handle that later. Okay, and so we in fact go through the little, um, perhaps we could call it a song of, uh huh, I see you, out you go, you cannot. Thoughts about the what or thoughts about donuts, they're out. And then they say, ah ha ha. Guess what? I don't have to think about donuts anymore. Then we have the thought, wow, it really is good to be free from donuts. They're so dangerous. Mmm, donuts. Mm -hmm. But one question comes to mind is, but there has to be some conditioning. For example, if I go out with a friend and he sees, okay, let's take an asshole example, but let's say, I've let's say I've had problem with black people and I see black people and 
then I get triggered and I get fear. And he doesn't because of, let's say, I had something in the past, you know, experiences with black people that he didn't have. So there has to be some conditioning that is down there that is affecting my life in a different way than he, than his life. So mm -hmm. isn't right. there some value in digging into that and looking at it and saying you no, are a piece of shit, go there away? Is, no, there is great value in, in that moment when you see that man and you see these feelings and the feeling is almost as you expressed, probably the feeling of fear or the feeling of trepidation at least. Yeah, and I can see it's completely irrational, but... That's the point. You can see <clears throat> that that is completely irrational. This is wisdom coming into play. A lot of people, when that fear comes up, that irrational fear, they stay irrational. But you're waking up. And you're waking up to that there is nothing dangerous here that this is not dangerous. My problem is that is when I see it once as irrational, why doesn't it go away? Because like logical, it just makes sense. Because it's an old habit. But if you chase it away every time, that's good enough. You want it to not be there. That's exactly the same thing that we had with Mr. Turd. <laughs> yeah. Exactly yeah, sure. the same thing, right? So now you can be happy that, oh, I recognize there's nothing dangerous here, yet I feel danger. But yeah, there's exactly. nothing to be dangerous. So you can actually now nourish yourself. The critical parent is the one who told you to be on guard for black people. Now you can change that into nurturing parent in the sense of telling yourself there's nothing to be afraid of here. There's no danger. Take a deep breath and sigh. Everything is okay. <laughs> okay. You scold yourself. Why do you feel so afraid? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's use the wisdom that you have. Instead of handing it as a weapon to the old critical parent, allow that um, newfound information, there's no danger here, to settle the situation. Turn, nurture, turn that critical parent. You've been so critical for so long on yourself. It's time to be nurturing. Give yourself a break. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Like, we talked about it so, so many times and just different sayings and situations and <laughs> it's like I'm always like yeah I'm bringing up some completely new stuff and you're like, yeah no it's just it's the same <laughs> <laughs> well it's the same feelings you just have different thoughts about them but it's the same Mr. Turd yeah always the same not liking it uh-huh and not liking Mr. Turd. Okay. And that's exactly what beginning students do the first time they sit down to meditation with the instructions, watch the breath. And one, two, three minutes later, they recognize that the mind had wandered away from the breath. And what do they do? They don't like it. Bingo, yeah. just what you're doing. <laughs> and so the first thing we have to teach them is, hey, be happy that you caught the mind wandering away. Be happy like the Buddha did. This is exactly what happened with the Buddha, is that he says, aha, I see you, Mara. In this case, aha, I see you wandering away from the breath. For you, aha, I see you, Mr. Turd. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> and so you have to have that aha, uh -huh, I see you as a joyful thing. That you're making progress. Allow yourself to congratulate that you're actually seeing things that you couldn't see before. 
And because of that, they run your life. Yes. Now you can see that you've got weeds in your garden and you can pull it up one at a time in this present moment. There you are. Out you go. Yeah. OK. There you are. Out you go is all we have to do. Like the old man, every time he thought about the what, ah, there's that what, out you go. Not going to mm. think about it. Okay. Yeah. Every time that donut comes into mind, ah, I see that. <laughs> I see you as Mara. I see you as dangerous, and out you go. Okay. Yeah, maybe I was thinking about too much in the sense of like a one thing, like when I can see it and it makes logical, rational sense, then it has to be gone away because it just makes sense for me. But yeah, maybe. Oh, no, you've been talking yourself. You've been nasty to yourself. You've been critical of yourself for so many years. And it's going to take a while to turn that ship around. Okay. Okay, okay, so okay. the natural tendency when it comes up is it comes up critical. Yes. And you're going to have to change it into nurturing. To nurture yourself. Give yourself credit for being a good boy. You can do this meditation stuff. You can clean out your mind. Including all the not liking about your not liking. Change that. You can begin to change the way you feel. You can change the way you think, but you got to keep practicing. Because most people do. They give up way too soon. Yeah, I can see that. Like <laughs> I see it in a lot of stuff that I start. <laughs> okay. Hmm. <laughs> So, yeah, that's basically what I wanted to talk about today. Well, we did. Yeah. Aha, <laughs> uh <-huh>, yes. <laughs> now, one last thing before we go. Mr. Turd's really not all of that important anyway. We think that everything is important. And it's not really important. What is important? Whatever you think is important, look at it closely. It might not be. <laughs> <laughs> maybe taking the next breath, maybe seeing dukkha would be important. But anything else is... Is dukkha? <laughs> well... Uh, it's, it's dangerous when we label it as, uh, gratifying without being able to see the danger. Hmm. Yeah. Let's make sure that when something is gratifying, that that's all you have. <laughs> Gratification. <laughs> no danger. Yeah. Okay. So more like a toy mentality to play with it too. Play with it, exactly. Enjoy playing with it. Investigate it. Like any good little girl does, she'll take her dolls and first she'll take the clothes off of them, but eventually she'll take the head and the legs off too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, but if, if it's an expensive doll, the parents will say, oh, that's important and you can't take that doll apart. Yeah. <laughs> so nothing is really all of that important. Mr. Turd's really not all of that important. Mm -hmm. I, I, I will. I will look at that. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I can handle that. Mr. Turd, he nothing much. Had him around a long time. He run my life, but. Now, no, he's not important anymore. Mm. Yeah, got some stuff to look at. 
Excellent. Enjoy. Mm. We'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.